Tom Baker, there are some differences between working with mostly adults and working primarily with kids who are having some difficulties in their lives or school, right? That's right. Uh, the first thing to remember is that a kid's brain is not a partial-sized version of an adult, an adult brain. Kids, from the time they're born to the time they're, they're 25 years old, add the equivalent of 2,500 miles of wiring in, in, in their brain. So there are fits and spurts and blossoms and prunes uh, during that process. So kids don't think the same way that adults do, although especially as teenagers, they can act and process in many of the same ways, but they're just not quite there yet. Amy Wilson comes at this from a little different perspective. How did you come to be involved with Learning Rx? Well, actually, my story started, my daughter was in third and fourth grade, and at that time, we were just beginning to receive feedback from the school, um, you know, the typical, you know, she's not staying focused, she's really not on task, and as a parent, you don't have much to deal with that other than to treat it as a behavioral issue. So I just would say to Audrey every morning, make sure you're listening to the teacher's voice, make sure you're staying focused, and thinking that was my encouragement for her to just really try harder to really focus in. When I realized that there was more underlying than just um, her choosing not to focus was in the fifth grade parent-teacher conference. Um, Audrey was sitting in with me, and I began to tell the teacher that same thing. I'm reinforcing every morning. I know you say there's still a problem, but I'm, I'm trying to get her to listen to your voice, to stay focused, and I turned, and Audrey's had tears running down her face. And I realized, oh, my goodness, I think something else is going on here. She said, you know what, uh, Mr. Spake and, you know, Mom, I am trying my hardest to listen and I am I do not understand why I can't stay focused I mean she was really I could tell at a breaking point and so um, I realized right then and there that this was something that I had been giving her these pep talks and what I'd been doing is actually adding to her stress level because I was telling her not realizing it that Audrey if you just tried harder you could do this and yet really she had some type of learning situation going on so I just determined then and there I wasn't gonna feel guilty I wasn't gonna keep anxious I was going to be determined to find a solution to this and and find an answer and you know my husband and I talked medication really wasn't an avenue we wanted to take especially my husband Rob he just he really felt like there had to be another way and so we were gonna exhaust our resources that was kind of our determination so I actually went on the website or actually went on internet and googled ADD with no med and um, it came up with this article from the founder of learning RX to be honest and um, I was reading through it. it it addressed a lot of issues she was dealing with and it had answers and I thought well hey this might be something we are, we're going to pursue. So I actually found a location near us, a college boulevard. We aren't too far from there. Called up and Tiffany answered the phone. She really addressed, well, she let me know that I wasn't alone in this, that these learning struggles can oftentimes be assessed. They can be addressed. And there's things they can do to train a brain to actually overcome some inefficiencies. So I was quite thrilled with that. And just to add an extra bonus onto it, she said, you know, we often find that uh, there's a correlation between a perfectionist attitude that anxiety level and this learning struggle well my goodness that's exactly what Audrey had done she had started withdrawing from activities it wasn't just this school issue she was also not choosing not to participate in activities because she told me she was disinterested that um, there's things she just didn't care about anymore but I just knew deep down that mother's intuition you know that there was this fear of failure going on and she was actually removing herself from putting herself out there to be told she's not measuring up and Tiffany had it, it just specifically addressed that certain thing so I thought oh my goodness I am so excited about this so anyway we went in the demo of a training session with with Tiffany she took Audrey right into this zone where she was making mistakes and I could see Audrey was very uncomfortable but it was such a positive encouraging environment and Audrey really felt like I could tell that they were going to help her and she she was finally getting a solution to this two-year struggle and probably was more than two years you guys probably know that it just it, it started the school had started to notice it in her third grade year so anyway I, I just can't say enough great things about learning RX and and how they just built her up but you know more than um, even her schoolwork which you know her teacher now says her focus is so much longer she is able to participate in class discussions I mean that was just unheard of she was in the back of the class and she wasn't even engaged let alone focused and now she's raising her hand and coming home 
home and telling us things she's learned. And, and what they had found, by the way, this was kind of a huge aha moment, was that she actually had a short-term memory issue. Well, all along we were told she was not an auditory learner, but really they couldn't have been farther from the truth. She actually had short-term memory issues, and they hit on working memory in her training sessions and just memory match games and things that made it fun but kept her intense. And, and really she learned resiliency, as your caller had talked about, you know, how to just push through when she made mistakes, feel comfortable there, know that she's getting somewhere. And really, it just was a such a positive experience. And so we are just thrilled that Audrey found an answer to this. And, and she's doing better in school now. Absolutely. And she even tried out this spring for um, a musical. No and, kidding. And got a part. And that's just something I just know a year ago would not have been an option for her. So. Tiffany, what did you do with this young lady that made all this difference? <laughs> you know, I think Amy is similar to a lot of parents that come in. They feel that there's something going on. There's something with their, their kid, and their kid is going, no, I just... I don't care. I just don't care. And in actuality, what we usually find once we sit down is that they do, in fact, care, that that's how they're hiding what's going on. And usually kids have been in some kind of pain or distress in school for a semester or more. So what I do is I usually will connect them to testing so we can determine the cause of what's going on. In Audrey's case, it was short-term memory. Sometimes it's a processing speed issue, sometimes auditory or visual. And then I'll connect them to a, a brain trainer, either myself or one of our 10 trainers on staff. And we play with them. We play with them in a, in a form that shows them that it's okay to make mistakes and that when you push through those mistakes that's how you actually get stronger so in Audrey's case it was really important for her to learn that because she was the type of perfectionist that I see often that takes himself out of the game it's a lot easier to choose to fail than to try and fail and so Audrey was taking herself out and now she's put herself back in the game and if she fails that's okay because that's a learning experience to go forward yeah, because even uh, George Brett didn't bat a thousand. Yeah, Absolutely. Right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, and what kind of th games did you play to accomplish this? We have a, a protocol, a book that the kids go out of, and it's set up in a, a matrix format. There's 24 exercises in our basic program that they go through, and in a 90-minute span she might do 10 different exercises that range from everything from, like Amy said, memory matching games to standing up and tossing the ball to to doing some other activities with us the important part is that the, they're always making about 10 to 20 percent errors so that's what i call a training zone so as long as she's playing a game with me i want her making that 10 to 20 percent errors really? mm -hmm. mistakes are important mistakes are very important so you learn how to deal with mistakes is that it that's it that's well, right. Steve, you're rewiring your brain to deal with mistakes. Because if you're playing a game and you're not making any mistakes, you're not learning. And if you're playing a game and you're making more mistakes than you get correct, then you're going to get frustrated pretty quick. So that training zone is that place in between. It's called the zone of proximal development, where you're exercising, where you're challenging your brain, and doing that for sustained periods of time, uh, 90 minutes at a time, three or four times a week for 12 weeks, you're challenging your brain to form new, new connections. Fascinating.